Hey, what's up, guys? It's Saturday. Um, my kids are on their way home from spring break, and I'm making iced coffee. And I wanted to bring you guys a reading vlog today. Obviously, you see the title of the video. I haven't vlogged in a long time. So if you're new here, before I got into booktube, I vlogged extremely a lot like just a lot i vlogged i vlogged i vlogged i was a vlogger then i transitioned over to booktube and i do a lot of sit down videos now so i'm like let's do a reading vlog because i'm reading the book my may by jessica george yeah when i seen that title i wanted to call it ma'am so bad but i learned that the title of the book is my may and you guys, the book is so good. I'm about 90% done. I got 10% left. So I was like, why not finish it up on a reading vlog and talk about the book? You know, do a book review and a reading vlog all at one time. So this is my first time doing a reading vlog. I'm gonna see how I like it, see how you guys like it. Um so real quick, I'm making me some iced coffee. I used to be a barista with Starbucks. So I love their concentrated iced coffee from the grocery store. If I go to a coffee shop to get iced coffee, I'm going to Dunkin'. I'm a Dunkin' girly all the way down, but I used to be a Starbucks barista. So I do know that the concentrate is so, so good. However, I don't really like the uh, iced coffee that they make in the store that they brew it's not as good as Dunkin's and and I want to say that <clears throat> I want to say that I was still going to Dunkin for iced coffee when I worked at Starbucks so there's that but anyway I'm making me some iced coffee so that I could chill and um finish up this book before the kids get home because I I have a toddler if you guys don't know, I have a toddler. He's one, he'll be two in May. And then I have a preteen, she's 12. And the preteen is gonna come straight home and go in her room, but the toddler, he gonna be toddling. So I'm like, let me go ahead and get my reading time in, finish up this book because I do wanna start a new one today. Um, I'm actually about to do a buddy read, which I'm so excited about. It's my first buddy read with a peer, my age group, cause you guys know if you follow my bookstagram page and if you don't what are you doing follow it here it is um i am doing buddy reading with my baby girl so i'm about to start another another buddy read with one of my bookish friends over on bookstagram so i want to go ahead and finish my may so my may is a coming of age story uh about a girl named madeline aka maddie aka my may she's 25 and her dad has Parkinson's disease. He's telling you that he has this disease is not a spoiler. It is on the summary of the book. So she is caring for him throughout this life-changing event. And in the midst of that, she's trying to find herself. You guys, it has been the best book that I've read thus far this year. Like, I don't know... I didn't know what to expect when I started reading this book. Like I was seeing it all over and then I got the ebook for like $1.99. I'm like, let me just go ahead and give it a try, y'all. This is one of those books that I wish I bought as a physical copy because I want a hardback to sit on my bookshelf. Like it is so freaking good. I can relate to Madeline so much. And I think that's why I love the book so much. And I don't want to give you guys any spoilers or anything, but she's basically going through the motions of finding herself because she's 25 and she's taking care of her sick dad. She hadn't found herself yet. So in this book, she's just going in emotions, going through the motions of finding herself in the midst of taking on this big responsibility of caring for her dad i mean she works she has her own life she's 25 years old she's a young adult so it's a wonderful becoming of age story and i'm 
I'm about 90% in, I definitely highly recommend the book. Like I do. I'm going to give you guys my rating later. But I definitely recommend the book. For one, it taught me some stuff about Parkinson's disease because I had no clue the detail about it. I never had a family member who had the disease. So I never had a reason to really research and figure out what it was exactly. So it taught me that. Um, it, it takes you through relationships with her other family members like her mom her brother um relationships with friends relationships with co-workers relationships with corporate america um and just trying to find herself and though i did not grow up trying to find myself i can relate to her family dynamics the very most I found myself laughing while reading this book, chuckling, literally. Reading a book next to my husband and he looking at me like, girl, are you reading a book or are you watching a movie? Like, it is so good crying, you guys. I woke up this morning, like 6.45, 7 o'clock, and I instantly started reading a book on my Kindle app for my phone um because it's so good and i'm just ready to finish it to see how it ends and you guys i was in my i was in my feelings it had me crying and then i went to the gym this morning and i worked out for i think an hour and a half and i spent most of my time doing cardio on the treadmill and i got through so much of that book and i was just like oh my god it has me in my feelings i have so much highlighted in that book we don't talk about that part later because I got so much highlighted in that book. But anyway, here's my iced coffee, you guys. I got distracted trying to tell y'all what the book was about. So I got a cute little mason jar, which I typically don't do, but I'm at home, so I'm going to do it today. I prefer an insulated cup um, that's going to keep my ice solid, keep my coffee cold, and not watered down. I know I can make me some coffee ice cubes. I just did not. Um, so in here I have, of course, I just showed you guys the Starbucks iced coffee. I'm watching my sugar intake. Um, so I'm doing this creamer. I just picked it up yesterday. I'm a French vanilla die hard. And this is the zero sugar one. But then I kind of defeated the purpose because I added me a little caramel drizzle to it. I would typically add whipped cream, but... I don't feel like it today, so I'm not. But yeah, we're going to take this coffee to my reading corner in my room and get into this book.
So here's the thing. I'm working from my iPad. I've been reading from my Kindle for more than 50% of this book. And for some reason, my Kindle stopped syncing my books. Now, granted, I have an old Kindle Fire. It's the 2011 edition. But you guys, I have not had an issue with it. Like, I've been raving about not having an issue with my Kindle. And then all of a sudden, it stopped syncing my books. And so, I'm so mad about it because now I have to read from my iPad. And it doesn't, it's not good on the eyes. Like, I have to have my iPad and my phone set on the black screen. Um, because the white screen is just really, really harsh. However, my Kindle app is set on the white screen. I might have to just set this to the white screen and see how I like it because I can't, I'm trying to really finish this book because I don't want to read from my iPad. Um, but yeah, I'm just so upset. I've been so in my feelings about my book's not syncing to my iPad. I mean, to my Kindle. And I know my Kindle is old, blah, 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 blah. But I love it so much because my book titles are in color. And like the more popular Kindles, like the paper white, the books are not in color. So, yeah, but I'm about 90% into the book. I'm going to continue reading. I think I'm not going to come back until I'm completely done. And then we're going to chit chat about it. Um, my iced coffee is good. But yeah, so I'll be back when I'm 100% done. This book is it's funny. It has some funny parts. So I'm just sitting here reading and cracking up because it has some funny parts but yeah so so far so good i'm excited about completing this book today and talking to you guys about it so yeah y'all i'm at the epilogue i'm at the epilogue oh my goodness like Wow, okay. Wow. We're gonna finish this and then I'll be right back because wow. You guys, this was a good book. Let's first start off with saying five stars. Five out of five. That's all I got to say. Five out of five stars for me. It was so freaking good i'm gonna start off with saying this story if you are one of those people who like for something to happen immediately more of a fast as soon as you open a book something needs to happen type of person this this book will not be for you this is a book that you have to read knowing that due to the circumstances you're going to be taken through the motions her dad had parkinson's disease and she is a 25 year old young lady she has her brother and her dad and her mother her mother and this this is going to be the spoiler part so if you gotten this far <laughs> of the video and you have not read it, pause, go read the book, come back, five out of five, highly recommend. And if you have read the book and you just wanna see how I felt about it, continue watching. So her mom lives in Ghana. Um, she says her mom lives in Ghana one year and then come home for a year lives there for a year and then come home for a year. Madeline was raised to keep family business in the family. 
don't discuss family business outside of the household. I'm the same way. I was raised the same way. Um, you don't really understand what that means until you become well into your adulthood and understand that what your parents were trying to hide from the outside world is what screws you up ultimately, right? And I'm not talking about little, little petty stuff to not share with the public or with the outside world. I'm talking about important stuff. Her mom didn't want people to know that she was moving and coming back living in Ghana a year, coming home for a year, living in Ghana for a year, coming home for a year. She didn't want, she didn't want the schools to know that for obvious reasons. Um, but that impacted Madeline, Maddie. We can call her Maddie. It impacted Maddie because while you're gone, I'm here taking care of dad. And my brother is gone because he think he a celebrity and he ain't nothing but a hype man. And I'm stuck here taking care of my dad and he's sick. And I'm trying to figure out who the heck I am. And I have to go to work every day. I have to take on all of these big adult responsibilities and I don't have my mom here to guide me and show me the way. Why am I taking care of your husband? Why aren't you here? That's the part that saddened me because I'm like, this young lady is 25 years old. In your 20s is where you mess up. You have the most fun. You get to experience all the crazy things, all the crazy fun things, right? Because by the time you get into your 30s, you probably know what you want to do career-wise. You're trying to get planted into something. But in your 20s, you are young adult. You should be having fun, hanging out with your friends. Maddie hadn't done any of that. She don't hang out. She she don't have any friends. She just go to work and come home and take care of dad. She's paying taxes. She's paying mortgage. She's paying the bills. She's paying medical bills. She's making sure her dad gets his medication. She's feeding him because he can't feed himself. She's never had sex. She's a virgin. She's never had a boyfriend. She's never hung out with friends. The friend that she does have from university, college, don't even live in the same country or state as her. And mom is not here. She's gone and gone, taking care of the family business on her side of town. So I have put a lot of notes in my thing. Let me see if they transferred over, child. So, like I said, 25 year old girl finding herself while also taking care of her father that has Parkinson's disease. I relate to Maddie so much. Although she's younger than me, I still relate to her so much because I'm the oldest and I am the big sister and I call myself the mama bear. So I'm the one who takes on the most responsibility in my family growing up, me. Not so much now. And that's because I had to learn to set boundaries, but I related to her so freaking much. It was scary. Um, I think the relation, like I said, I think me relating to her is more of the responsibility thing and just having to take care of all of the important things. She has a brother who can help and he's not helping. It's usually the headstrong, the only girl, the oldest that take care of everything. So I related to her so, so much. Uh, I couldn't get over the fact, I couldn't get over the mom's living situation while her husband was sick, but that was until I found out the reason behind it all. So finding out that mom was in an arranged marriage with her husband, this was planned. This was not somebody she, genuinely fell in love with that asked to marry her this was planned by her family so for throughout the entire book because you don't find that out until she's having that heart-to-heart -heart conversation with her mom after her dad passes away and after the funeral you don't find that out until later and she's like 
for the whole book i'm trying to figure out why is she still with this why is she still married to him if she's not here helping taking care of him and that explains it all she was married to him because convenience right and his family promised her family wealth and money so that's why she was still married even though there was no love no attachment there that's why she was still married to him and for the whole book it pissed me off so much because i'm like you need to get a divorce at this point um she kept making me mad when she was asking maddie for money you see maddie is here taking care of your husband and her dad financially and you supposed to be in ghana taking care of the family business working why are you asking me for money? Why? You should be sending me money to assist with what my dad has going on. Like, that really just made me mad. Um, Maddie's brother, he wasn't shit. Maddie reminds me of, Maddie's brother, James, reminds me of somebody that I used to know. Um, Want to be famous so bad, chasing, uh, celebrity status being a hype man acting like you got gigs booked you ain't got nothing booked you just they shuttle driving them around on stage hopping yelling hype man and you just waiting on your turn and your dad is here sick so you need to be here and every time he would call her is when he would need something he would never call to check up on dad like he was there but not as often as he should be. And that really made me upset because again, the girls or the oldest always take the most responsibility in the household growing up. And people really don't talk about how you have to parent your parents. People don't talk about that. How you really have to parent your parents. People don't talk about that. How once you become an adult legally, you then turn around and flip and you become the parents of your parent. Like, we, sh we should have more books about that. Like, we really should. We really should. Um, I wanted to fight the dude she lost her virginity to, aka her first boyfriend. For one, when he found out she was a virgin, I automatically thought, okay, he finna start taking advantage of her. Because they had a big age difference. They had a big age difference, and I don't think they should have been dating. After she mentioned to him that she was a virgin, like they should have been dating. But it, it happened. It had to happen because when her mom finally came home, she was like, go live your life. Now, I really appreciated mom for that. She told her, you need to go live your life. And she did. She did. But mom, I can't go live my life if no one's here to take care of that. So she moved out, got some roommates. They call them flatmates. She got some roommates. She created this list, titled her new Maddie list, how she's going to be trying all new things. She's going to lose her virginity. She's going to smoke. She's going to drink. You know, all of the things that you do in your 20s. So when she met this guy, and the relationship sound, seemed so genuine at the beginning. It was just so cute. But then... I just knew as soon as she told him she was a virgin, it was gonna flip, and it did. And what really made me upset about him, and I can't remember his name, I think his name was Ben. What made me upset about Ben is that he invited her, he invited Maddie to a party for his job. And then figured because her dad passed that she wasn't gonna come. And they never discussed that she wasn't coming. So that's the part that behooved me. And so she went to the party anyway. And that's when she found out he was cheating. Well, he, she was a side chick. Essentially, she was a side chick. He already had a girlfriend and she was white. Ben was white. And that's embarrassing to literally go there. Your boyfriend has a spotlight at this conference or this party or whatever, whatever. And he gets on stage and his real girlfriend is standing out in the crowd. And she approaches you asking you, who are you? How do you know Ben? And you tell her and she, she's basically okay with it. Like she know her boyfriend is a cheater, but she's like, he ain't going nowhere. 
type of situation. That's an, that was embarrassing. That that's embarrassing. And then he got down like I didn't expect you to come. You invited me. You invited me. We've been boyfriend and girlfriend. We had sex. I, I was coming. I never told you I wasn't. So to assume that I wasn't, that's that's on you. That's on you. The way her first job fired her made me so mad. But that goes to show you that these jobs really don't care. That's why you re you really have to move around freely these, these days. Because these jobs, they really don't care. If they will fire you immediately. And they really needed that girl because her manager was a shit show. She needed therapy, her dog myself. Her first manager needed therapy. But I, though I was mad that they fired her, I was happy that they fired her because it gave her the opportunity to get her feet wet in other adventures and try other things. She had time off, even though she had to lie to her mama because her mama was home. She had to lie about, you know, having holidays or PCO or vacation days or whatever, but still like that gave her the opportunity to get her feet wet and try something new. I was happy when she got the opportunity to move out, but I knew when she left, her dad's health was gonna decline because her mama wasn't shit. Like, when her mom came home from Ghana, she pushed her out. She was like, get out there, right? Because not only that, she was trying to force her to get married and family tradition is this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. When you gonna get married, pushing all that on her. Like, she's 25, she's a virgin, she's been here taking care of her dad. How's she gonna get married? Where do, where, where's she gonna find a guy? Where's she gonna find them at? You know, like, where's she gonna find them? But I knew when she moved out and she was no longer there to keep on a close eye on her dad that his health was gonna decline and that he was gonna die. And when he did die, it made me so sad. And I knew she was gonna blame herself for his death. And that's the thing about when somebody dies that's really close to you, you find every reason to blame yourself. And I really didn't want her to. I understood why she did. But you find every reason to blame yourself. And it it was it's just so sad. The way she Googled everything, that's me. Baby, that's me. Cause if I don't know, if I'm in the middle of a conversation talking to somebody and they say something I'm not familiar with, I will pull out my phone. My phone is always in my hand anyway, and I will Google it. Um if I'm reading, I'm Googling words. I'm Googling everything. So she reminds me of me. Now, some of the stuff she was Googling, I'm like, girl. But I'm Googling everything. And she literally Googled everything because honestly, it's at the tip of your fingers. Your phone is there. And what pisses me off about today is that everybody goes straight to social media and asks instead of just Googling it. We keep our phones in our hands all the time. So I really loved how throughout the whole book, anytime she she was curious about something, she Googled it. Alex breaking up with her was the, was the most honest and perfect way to break up with someone. I couldn't even be mad at Alex for that. She met Alex on a dating site, something like, um, what's those dating sites? Uh, I don't know, child. I don't use dating sites. But she met Alex on a dating site. He was bisexual. She was trying it. He seemed to be a pretty good guy. However, he knew what he wanted sexually. And she couldn't fulfill that. Especially with her being um, newly introduced into sexual activity. It, You know, when you first had sex as a woman, it hurts. And she had an experience good sex yet so she couldn't fulfill him the way his experienced self needed to be fulfilled and i think him breaking off the relationship being honest in that way was the most perfect way yeah you're gonna be sad about it right because it, you're in that situation and she was probably sad about it but he was honest and later on when she thinks about it she's gonna appreciate the way he broke off the relationship because he was basically like i wouldn't want to continue to be in a relationship with you if I know for a fact you're not going to be able to fulfill my sexual desire. And if you can't be that real, then what? You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. But if it wasn't for that, I think their relationship would have worked. Um, if she would have stopped lying. Because <laughs> that girl was just lying, making up stuff. I feel like, I felt like 
eventually she was gonna start telling the truth but the story went a whole different way than what I was thinking but I feel like eventually she was gonna start telling the truth and the relationship could have worked um, learning to give our parents grace is hard we tend to forget that they are humans and, there's, and they are learning to be parents the same way we're learning to do things. Like, we put this high expectation of knowing it all on them and it makes it hard for them. We all are human. We all come into this world. We're trying. We're literally out here winging it, everybody. And so, and this is, this is, coming from me because I've, I've, I'm trying to I'm trying to come up out of this too but we hold such a high standard on our parents because they are our parents that we forget that they are learning too nobody gave them a handbook on how to be a parent nobody gave them a handbook on how to be a human being we are all just out here and I think um, me reading that I was like wow you know like Yes, and I and that's something I had to come to terms with myself as well. Like, it's hard though when you're trying to overcome. Um, and I'm not gonna say bad relationships because it wasn't a bad relationship. It was just she was overwhelmed with responsibility that she really just shouldn't have had. And when you're having that sit down or that coming to terms conversation, you really have to learn to extend grace to your parents like they are learning that you, I, me I'm my mama's first child my, my parents first child they were 20 when they had me you know they are learning 20 is young um, they are learning so I think um, some people can be really really hard on their parents in that aspect I was so happy that Maddie was able to verbally say what was wrong with her and that she had the opportunity to ask her mom questions when that opportunity came because she needed that like when they finally got back to her apartment and her mom was like trying to cook for her and stuff like that after she seen her mom with her boyfriend or whatever the guy her mom had been loving since college uh she had the opportunity the floor was open she had the opportunity to ask her mom questions like i seen you would do who is he <laughs> And how long y'all been seeing each other? And you know, that's when her mom told her, like, that's who I fell in love with in college. I wasn't supposed to be with your dad. Me and your dad was arranged for family wealth. Like, it was a business transaction. We were not supposed to be together. And so that did explain a whole lot when it came to why her mom was the way she was during this whole time. It explained a lot, but... I really wish she had found a way to explain it to her daughter a whole lot sooner than when her dad had died because, and I know she couldn't, but it was hard for Maddie. It was really, really hard for Maddie and f she couldn't figure out why, like, why is it like this? And she finally had the opportunity to ask her mom questions. Um, so I really love that. Now. I did uh, highlight a whole bunch of stuff in this book. Um, One of my favorite quotes in this book was, I can't comprehend living to work, but then I'm afraid of working just to live. That's when she was just trying to figure out her career path. Like, that's the thing, you guys. Today... It's hard. The workforce is super, super hard. And you can't retire until you look like 65. By the time you, you ain't a young tenderoni no more. And now I'm working until I'm 65 years old and I'm no longer a young tenderoni. This is whack. What other one I had? Um, it was in chapter 39. Regardless of how you behave, a lot of things are going to be out of your control because this world was made to test you. Protect your peace in whatever and every way that you can. Loved it. Loved that one down. Um, what else? I had some other 
marks that I love so much. Um, in chapter 39, it said, regardless of how you behave, a lot of things are going to be out of your control because this world was made to test you. Protect your peace in whatever and every way that you can. Period. Okay? Period. On page 266, she said, I have made many failures in raising you children, she says. Still not meeting my eyes. I am better than most mothers, but I should have done better by you, at least. You, Maddie, are special. God is in you. Everything you do, you do without being hounded to do so. You have a selfless heart, and sometimes James and I, we are not so different after all. Her and James was, was selfish, and her mom came to terms with, ma'am, we love you, Maddie. We love you and you, we love you, don't everything that we don't love you. Um, when it was time for them to read the will and her dad left her that $50,000, her mom had the audacity to be upset that, that the money was not left for him, for her. Her mama literally had the audacity to be mad that Dad left all that money for Maddie. James said, James, however, is smiling, resting his hand on his mom's shoulder. He said, you're not upset about not getting the money, are you? After all, you shouldn't be so attached to the earth material things, Matthew 6, verse 19, because baby, you be preaching us the Bible all the time. And you told us not to get attached to earth material things. And here you are sitting in this living room waiting on this man to tell you that this man had left you some money. Why would he be leaving you some money? You ain't gonna take care of him. You did not help take care of him. You guys, this book, this book was so good, okay? All in all, I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you follow me on Bookstagram, you seen me posting about it all week. The whole week that I was reading the book, you see me post about it because I loved it down. If I run into this book on the shelves, I'm buying it because I want it in a hard copy. I want it to sit on my bookshelf. This is one that I would definitely read again. This is one that I would want my daughter to read. Um, my mama. I would love for my mom to read this book as well. Um, Y'all, let me know if you read this book. Um, let me know how you feel about this reading vlog. I know it's a little different. It's a little different for me. But I figured why not do a reading vlog to finish out the book plus do my book review while it's still fresh on my head because I had so much to say. Um, but all in all, I love the book. Five stars. Highly recommend. If you've gotten this far in the video and you have not subscribed, please click that subscribe button. Let's chat in the comments. The book title is My May. Okay, not ma'am. The book title is My May. So if you was digging the book by Jessica George, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Until next time, peace out.